If I was a rich man and I lived in America, this is what I would buy. A Ram, not a Dodge Ram. Oh no, 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 not for about 10 years. Ram was spun off as a separate truck company. Look at this beast. Look how high the bonnet comes up. It comes up to my chest, I think that's just extraordinary. Ram badge on the front and look at this fantastic chrome grille. Down below, we've got some towing hook things for bushy, off-road, get you out of trouble stuff. And sensors, drive you mad in the bush, but you can turn them off. And look at this chrome bumper with the uh, driving lights. I think this looks absolutely sensational. And can I tell you what, we really had a lot of uh, comments as we've been driving along. Some people have even stopped us. We've got these massive mirrors, great for towing. The inside bit moves just as, uh, as always, and they're heated and they fold and they do all the good stuff because believe me, when you try and park this thing as I just did in a suburban car park to go and get a coffee, you want as much space to get past this as possible. Along the side, you've got that badge with the 5.7 litre Hemi. Rob, how much has this got again? 291 kilowatts. 291 kilowatts and how many newton metres? 565, no, you, they, they can hear you, that doesn't matter. Okay. 565. <laughs> 565 newton metres. Now you've got these massive wheels. Uh, now these have got the road going tyres on, so you probably really wouldn't want to go too far off road. Now we did do that at the launch and the people in front of us got stuck on a uh, bit of a hill. Have a look. So here they are going up the hill, and yeah, oh, 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 no, not quite, oh, 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 and they eventually made it. The thing is, it just proves that no matter what car you've got, if you don't have the right tyres, you aren't going to be able to make the trip. Meanwhile, back here, we've got easy entry. So we've got the keys stashed in your pocket, the button locks and unlocks the doors, And you've got side steps. These things you can actually stand on to get in. And believe me, I'm almost six foot and I need to use these things to get in. I did try and slide across, but it came up to about here on my bum. This is a Ram box. Try and work that into a conversation at a party. I've got a Ram box. This is a completely different tub. If you don't order this from the factory for five grand, this is a completely different tub. What it does is it uses the space over the wheel arches. Now, uh, Ram told us that you can put ice in this. It's got little plugs, look. Can you come in here and see the... So it's got little plugs, you can take the plugs out and drain your ice. This locks with the car, and that's a fairly sturdy lock. So the, the back of it, now again, I know we're standing on some uneven ground, but that's coming up to my shoulder. That's how big this thing is. That, some of the Ram models are perfect for fifth wheelers, you know, for those big caravanning things. So if you happen to want to go away and take your tiny home, you can do that. But with this particular car, it's got a reversing camera. It would be almost undrivable without the reversing camera and sensors. Down below, I've got a towing hitch. This thing can tow 3,500. I sound like a game show host. Uh, so it's a fairly sturdy hitch, uh, all the electrical connections and what have you. The thing about this uh, Ram is that it is imported privately into Australia. So there's no Ram company in Australia as such, but all of the Rams that come to Australia start life in America on an assembly line bound for Australia. So they come built for Australian conditions, except for the steering is on the wrong side. Now, the company that brings them in, uh, Atiko, they have a factory in Melbourne where they remanufactured is actually put a proper dash in that's manufactured specifically for a car for Australia. It's not just one that's been chopped up from America, which is good. Now, what you can't see from over there is you open the, the tailgate up, there's lights either side, and they have this cool divider that divides off the rear tub. It's adjustable, so you can put this anywhere in the back tub. But what it also does uh, is you can bring this thing right out. Huh? Eh? What do you reckon? You can turn it around like this, lock it into place, and I've only gone and extended the payload of my trolley using the tailgate and this really cool divider. 
Now they showed us that at the launch and frankly I didn't believe it was going to be that easy, but this was a piece of easy stuff. Something that's easy. That was really, that was easy. Once you found out how to do it, that was easy. Okay. And now that's locked securely back in place again. So what that means, ladies and germs, is that you can do your shopping, if you don't mind it getting nicked, you can do your shopping, put it in just this little space here, close the tailgate, and your oranges aren't gonna roll around the trolley. One thing I don't like is the foot operated brake, which is over on this side. It's on the right hand side, so you've got to take your foot off the foot brake and put it onto the foot operated parking brake. Honestly, it's just ridiculous. The thing about driving something this big is it is actually not that difficult to work. The controls you're going to realise are fairly familiar if you've driven a Chrysler in the last uh, you know, decade or so. And the other thing is that you notice that it is incredibly easy to steer. Now we're not exactly off-road but nor are we in a city street either. This is a not exactly very smooth track. However, I can't feel a thing. Mud, I see mud. Awesome. One thing I noticed at the launch was that no matter what we did with this car, it seemed to cope. Like it coped really, really well. And whether it's in the city, or whether it's on a launch like this, and whether it's in the city or on a track like this, it seemed to be completely at home. But you do need to take extra care because this is kind of really not, I mean, it is an off-roading vehicle, but it's not exactly an off-road vehicle, if you know what I mean. So the front, although there's plenty of clearance, there is this very low hanging uh, air dam dash splitter. Why? I don't know, but there it is. That big V8 really does its thing. The thing about driving around the city is, it doesn't feel big until you have to park it. Then it feels really big. But Ram is just one of those cars that's deceptively easy to drive. You just saw us off on that track. That's not a particularly challenging track by any means, but it just shows how utterly, utterly versatile this car is. I am sitting a very long way up. But there's lots of things inside that are brilliant. For example, if you've driven a Chrysler in the last 10 years, you'll recognise all of the switch gear. The same with the Uconnect system. That's pure Chrysler too. It's got switches on the back of the steering wheel. That's like a Chrysler. And the gear selector. That's like a Chrysler Dash Range Rover. I like the things about the Dash. I like the big, easy to read digital dashboard. Uh, but only the centre part's digital. I like the carrying space, I like the space in here, I like the fact that there's 10 cup holders that I've seen, but I'm told there's more. There's a double uh, glove box. And the thing is, even on the highway there, this thing was like riding in a really big high riding limo. It isn't pretending to be an SUV when it's not. It's not pretending to be a... <laughs> Did you know, I just went around that roundabout, then I just flipped my wrist and around it went. It's not pretending to be something that it's not, and a lot of cars, I think, are. This is as brawny as Arnold Schwarzenegger in his weightlifting days. It's as butch as... Mm, I was going to say a... Um, as butch as a Hemsworth, but probably isn't. sound is just fabulous. Now remember, this thing can turn off cylinders, two or four cylinders, depending on how much it requires for power. You know it's American. You know it's big. You know this thing has more testosterone than The Rock. 
We did a little bit of track work just then, and by track work I don't mean on a track, I mean on a track. I love this car, I love the Americanness of it, I love the, the, the bigness and the boldness of it. It is beautiful. Think about it this way, in its class, if you can call it that, we've got Hiluxes and Navaras and Rangers and so forth, and yes they're all four wheel drive, they do have two wheel drive options, they can't tow what this can. They are nowhere near the size that this is. Mind you, they use a lot less fuel. We, they claim that it gets under 10 litres per 100 kilometres ish, or thereabouts. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't. Even at the launch, they were very confident that this car would get really good fuel consumption, relatively speaking. How heavy is this? About two, about two eight, about 2,800 kilos. I am going to rate Ram at 9 out of 10 just because I love it. Is it the best car in the class? Well at the moment it's pretty much the only car in its class. Don't forget, as always, subscribe and leave a comment. So subscribe here and leave a comment down there. Down there.